And one of the things that struck me was, after eight years teaching there, that still a lot of UA nationals were very passive. Although they have great ideas, they don't put them in action. And they don't really want to take that first step. So I started researching ways of changing this, and I came across an organization called the Jubilee Sailing Trust in the UK, who sails with half, the half of the crew are people with a disability, and the other half are people that are fully able. And they sail tall ships like the Pirates of the Caribbean. And they sail them around the world. They have two ships. They're the only organization that does this. I got really interested in this. <coughs> and so the next summer, what happened is, I booked myself on a trip. I went there, and for one week, I was a buddy of someone who was disabled. I had to look after someone that was disabled. I've never worked with people with a disability before. So it was a bit scary. But the experience that I had there, learning together with 38 other people to sail a tall ship and to work with people that are disabled was a mind shift for me. And I just want to tell you a little bit more about that. Before I do so, I would like to ask you a question. It's a strange question. But if you had to choose, it's a multiple choice question, so it shouldn't be too hard, correct? So, what would you choose? And inshallah, you never have this. It will never happen to you. But if you had to choose between these three options, which one would you choose? If you had to make a choice between being blind, being deaf, or in a wheelchair, which one would you choose? Let's analyze that for a minute. Being blind, what happens if you are blind? Obviously you can't see anything. What does that mean? You can't see the grass. You can't see the trees. You can't see the water. You can't see the water go through the wadi. You can't see your children. You can't even see your parents. Life would be totally different, correct? We feel sorry for people that are blind. What about being deaf? If you're deaf, what happens then? You can't hear anything. You can't hear the music. Watching a movie is going to be totally different. You can't hear people talk. Life would be totally different, wouldn't it? We feel sorry for people that are deaf. And if you're in a wheelchair, well, your life will change totally. Because going somewhere will take a totally different meaning. You can't just go and go for a walk. Go to the park, go and for a walk on the beach, together with your children or the rest of your family. Life would be different. We feel sorry for people that are in a wheelchair. And you know what? What I learned on this trip for a week that people that are disabled, they don't want to, you to feel sorry. They just want to be treated like everybody else. They don't want your pity. They just want you to see what they can do, not what they cannot do. Because one of the things that we do all the time, when we see people that are disabled, we focus straight away on the things that they cannot do. We should focus on the things that they can do. Being blind, when I did my MBA quite some time ago, one of the other students was a blind person. Now she runs a company with some 300 people. People that are deaf, believe me, they can be very, very good artists. And people that are in a wheelchair, they can do multiple things. They can do so many things. They can be business people. You can do anything. And so they want you to look at what they can do and they want you to look and treat them like everybody else. <coughs> so our aim at Sail Arabia is to help people. To help people like you and I to see over this because we are in a way disabled. We are in a way disabled because we cannot see over those issues. And we make it difficult for people that are disabled. So, Sail Arabia will want to help you come get over that disability. 
We want to help people that are disabled to integrate into society, to become part of it, rather than be separated. And I've seen this happening in the UK, originally I'm from Holland, I've seen it happening in Holland. And organizations there have for 30 years doing this, when 30 years ago the Jubilee Sailing Trust started. What happened there, people said you should build a hospital ship, you should not build a ship where everybody has to work together. How can you work together between people yeah, where, where you have disabilities and people that have no disabilities? It's too dangerous. And you know what? It's totally changed. 25 years later, we now work with people with disabilities. People with disabilities and in wheelchairs are just in the society like everybody else. They have jobs. They do things. Everyone contributes to society. That's the idea. Everyone needs to contribute. So we need to help people to value and make the most of what they have, to understand what their talents are and what they can do and how they can make a difference. How? How can we do that? By showing what can be done. And if I can show you on a trip that you can learn how to sail a tall ship with a group of people that are in wheelchairs and people that are blind and visually impaired and, uh, or hearing impaired or other disabilities, you'll be amazed. You come out of it after a week and you say, wow, if this is possible, we can do a lot more. So we promote active citizenship. To show you what happened on a week, I went with on a trip, I tried it out with some of my students. And so some of the people were disabled and some of the people were fully able. And we tried it out and we went on a trip with the Jubilee Sailing Trust around the Canary Islands. This was a seven day trip. And this, we made a short video that will show you exactly what happened on the trip, rather than me telling you this is much, much more effective. So enjoy this three minute video. What the Tenacious and Lord Nelson do is, is really pretty different. It's, uh, as well as being a sort of personal development thing, it's, you're actually kind of contributing. You, you know, you're going on holiday, but you're giving something back at the same time. We've got some people in wheelchairs, we've got some people who are on sticks, like me, but there are some able-bodied people, and so, yeah, there is a, there's a, a vast spectrum of people on this boat, and that's what makes it so enjoyable, because there are so many people here who experience different things, and they can share that with you and help to see how you can help them and they can help you. Everybody joins in and I can't think of a better way to learn to get on with people and get that sort of confidence and a feeling of survival. So they um, are in charge of doing all the sail handling, setting sail, taking in sail. Um, they keep watches, they helm the ship, they take the ship alongside, take it back out to sea. Um, they do sort of a bit of navigation under the supervision of the permanent crew and, um, and cleaning. Yeah, it's just part of, of real life. Perhaps some of us have forgotten about really and uh, clearly there's some tasks that aren't as good as others. You have to do everything on the ship. If you're not, you're made to, right from the, the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> on one of the first trips I did, there was a, a young fellow, I think he had maybe cerebral palsy, he had quite limited movement, he was in a wheelchair. And I think he was kind of, perhaps a little bit, you know, at home he was treated a little bit kind of gently and everything was done for him and so on. And, and um, he just, in, in a week, he was just amazingly different because he was delighted to be allowed to do stuff. You know, when you, when you said, right chaps, it's you know, time to do the dishes now, he was just, he was over the moon. I've never seen anybody so pleased to dry dishes ever. Uh, well, one thing I've noticed a lot is that uh, the tendency that people kind of think, oh, disability is all about wrapping people up in cotton wool. But the thing about this boat is that it's, it's just not. It's about getting on with it. And if you don't get on with it, then the boat won't sail. I suppose it's a bit like life, really. I know the first time I came sailing, I'd never really had anything to do with anybody with a disability before um, and really didn't know how to react. Because of the way the ship's designed, disabled people are able to take often an independent role in activities that, even for the able-bodied person coming on the ship, are new to them. For 40 plus people all coming together and pulling their weight to get a vessel like this sailing successfully takes a huge amount of human endeavour. And at one point, You've got Carl sailing the ship with an automated joystick. It's really quite special. There just couldn't be. There isn't anything else like that in the world. And I never cease to be surprised how often someone with often quite severe disabilities turns out to have uncanny abilities in other areas. 
I don't know what to say really, it's just perfect. Ollie particularly has grown so much. It's just worth every penny. A lovely comment I've had many times when people have left is someone leaving the ship saying, they're never going to believe me when I go back home and I tell them what I've been doing. And yet on this ship, that's normal. People do things they just don't believe they could do. And giving money to the Trust allows that to happen for so many people.